This is Twit. I mentioned a few minutes earlier that I had an oscilloscope here tonight. We're going to be using it because we're going to go back and talk a little about the power supply that uh, Bob showed us earlier tonight and I discussed last week. I want to look at filtering. So we've, we've actually got some demos here uh, rather than just me pointing at photos. First thing we're going to do is look over here. Uh, this is what we've got, the scope. I've got a little circuit board here that's got the parts that we're talking about. This was a simplified drawing that I did last week. I removed the vacuum tube and I just inserted two diodes in there so that it would be real simple to see how this worked. And that's what I've got here on the uh, experimenters board. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to take a look at just a 9-volt battery and see what that looks like on the scope. Well, it doesn't really look like anything, does it? Just uh, a line here at the top that indicates, uh, well, it's a little over 9 volts. Can't see it from where I'm sitting here, but just a little over 9 volts typically, and there's no noise, no ripple or anything. It's just a straight line there. You know, this is zero volts here. As you go up, you're going positive. If you go down, you're going negative. So that's just a good, clean, pure DC signal right there. Okay, well, let's look over at the power supply now. The first thing I want to look at here is just a single diode by itself. This would be a half-wave rectifier. It's unfiltered because there are no capacitors or anything hooked up. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to connect my probe here to ground. And I've only got one of the leads of the transformer here connected. So if we look at just the one diode here, hmm, actually I need to turn it down a little bit because... We are clipping there. We've got a, a square wave there, essentially. You can see that uh, that's, that's because we're clipping the scope, and I'm not sure why we're doing that. There we go. I had it on the wrong setting. You can see we're only using the top half of the waveform there. There's nothing falling below zero there, which is what you'd normally see with AC. If we looked at that, there's AC right there. Goes all the way across. But with the half wave here, we're only using the top half of the waveform. The bottom half is just clipped off. So it's wasted. And that's not really um, DC at all. I mean, if you look at it, it's just half of a sine wave. Yeah, you can call it DC, but uh, really, there's a lot of ripple there. If we look at that, uh, this scope has a frequency counter on there. It's showing that it's 60 cycles. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at here is two diodes connected together that make the full wave rectifier, and this is you know, what we're using in the circuit we've been talking about. You can see here when we use that, we've got both halves of the waveform. In other words, instead of just being clipped off here, that half of the waveform is inverted, and so we've got a more steady supply of positive DC pulses there. Uh, if we looked at it on the frequency counter there, it's 120 hertz. It's twice as much. But still, that l really looks more like AC than it does DC because it's unfiltered. There's all this ripple current in there. Well, we can filter this thing. Uh, the first filter we're going to look at here is just a simple 1,000 microfarad capacitor. We're just going to put it across from ground up to our positive leads there from the two diodes. So, to do that, I'm going to connect it right here. Now we've got the 1,000 microfarad capacitor, if I can get it to stay. And we look across here, and now we do have a DC, but it's a little noisy. You know, we see 
some ripples still happening there. But it's much closer to D.C. than what we had previously. Well, it is D.C. It just has ripple riding on it. You notice also on the light bulb I've got connected there, now that light bulb gets brighter when we've got it filtered and we smoothed out that waveform to pretty much just straight DC. And this is a thousand microfarad capacitor I've got connected across it here. So you might say, well, you know, why don't we just use a thousand microfarad capacitor? Why do we need to use the three 20 microfarad capacitors and the two 1K ohm resistors there to make up the dual pi network. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One reason is it's really not that cheap to buy a 1,000 microfarad capacitor that can withstand the 150 volts that Bob is talking about in this circuit. You can buy them. They get a little more expensive, especially when you get into higher voltages than that. Also, it really doesn't filter quite as well as just those little 20 microfarad capacitors in a properly constructed Pi filter. So let's go back and look at that. I'm going to connect it now to the Pi filter that we were just looking at. Uh, let's look at that circuit one more time. Come out of the two diodes. We've got the three capacitors going across the line along with the two resistors in there to form two-section pi filter. Okay, if we look at the junction with just one section of that pi filter, what we're going to see is this right here. That looks like DC, that, as a matter of fact, that is filtered better than, uh, here we go, that's filtered better than what we were seeing coming from the 1,000 microfarad capacitor by itself. Still a little ripple on there, and you notice that the voltage did drop a little bit. That's because we've got those 1,000 ohm resistors in series there. Now, this is just with one section of the pi filter. Let's move on out to where we're using both sections of it. And look at that. It's uh, really, it's practically straight DC there. This little noise that we're seeing is actually being picked up with the scope probe on uh, this noisy power supply here. Uh, the transformer plus some other cables I've got running under the table here. But you can see that really cleaned it up. So if we look at the original, which is right here, compare that to what we get out of two sections of that Pi filter there, we've got a much cleaner looking signal. So there you go. That's why we're going to use the Pi filter there with just three little small 20 microfarad caps and to 1,000 ohm resistors, we can really clean up the ripple on that DC signal there.